Hello everyone and welcome back to another discussion video. I want to make something immediately clear. It's important to get good with Pyra and Mithra. In order to play at your best, you need to be proficient with both. That's a given. However, today I want to discuss why I think learning Pyra specifically could be more important. Before we start though, I am really close to 5000 subscribers and I'm hoping to hit that milestone this year. So if you enjoyed the video and you're interested in more Pyramithra stuff, please boot the subscribe button. We need to address the elephant in the room. What's the main reason Aegis players take a lot of damage and lose their stocks? That's right, it's Pyra. No, of course it's not her fault. People have no idea what they're doing and a lot of the time she's being piloted terribly. From my experience and the people I've spoken to, the majority seems to struggle playing as Pyra. But Mithra is not an issue. They'll do just fine, but as soon as Pyra is out, everything starts to go downhill. She gets juggled, her attacks get stuffed out by faster moves, etc. I know, they stayed Pyra for too long is a very common phrase, but it only describes the problem at a surface level. Because it was never really about staying Pyra for too long, but about how she's played during that time frame. There's been too many situations where my opponent switches to Pyra and I either camp or stuff out their attacks until they give up and switch back. Of course this is mainly because I know what she's capable of and what she's looking for. But the point still stands. If you're going to switch and then fish for down airs, kill moves or god forbid blazing end, you won't get very far. Please run into this is what I've dubbed this playstyle because nothing happens if you don't move. And I get it. Pyra eats people who hold forward for breakfast. However, when you're playing against good opponents, they won't blindly hold forward and it just doesn't work. I want it to be known that I think Pyra can function fine in neutral, but that's only if you know how to play her. In the previous video I talked a lot about her airspeed and auto cancels. These are both things you need to understand if you want to play Pyra for any extended period of time. Otherwise she becomes very slow and easy to hit. I think part of the issue is that the flow chart just isn't good. People will do what they think is good, when in reality it's terrible. And they probably don't know any better. Like yes, Pyra has a lot of kill power, but it doesn't matter if she can't land anything or if she doesn't get the swing. Her whole selling point falls by the wayside when she's played poorly. Mithra can finish her job herself as she's not nearly as weak as people think but it's never something you'd want to resort to. Winning neutral with her over and over and wrecking up damage is good. Great even. But if you switch to Pyra to capitalize and you can't follow through, then that's it. And she's supposed to be the one that deals the final blow. That's how she was designed. There's also so many Pyra specific things Aegis players seem to be unaware of. And I mean a lot. Trust me, you'll be able to seal stocks earlier and in very unexpected ways when you get more experience. Pyra is difficult for the same reason Shulk is difficult. There's a lot of startup on pretty much every move they have, and that takes time to get used to. Plus, since she's slower, Pyra is all about positioning and timing. Which again, takes time to get used to. Her pace is a lot slower and you can't afford to be mashing. Everything you do needs to be properly considered and executed. Some things you can learn by watching others, and some things you can only learn by practicing. And I suppose that's the bottom line. I want people to play Pyra and improve with her. It's frustrating to watch people lose games and sets because their Pyra is, pardon my language, hot garbage. That's not even mentioning the Elite Smash Aegises, who have ran their reputation into the muds ever since launch. Even today, opponents are getting ready to reflect Blazing End when I switch to Pyra. Yeah, the damage has been done. I swear every nest does this when they see Pyra on screen, they just start F smashing like crazy, even if nothing is happening. I hope I didn't come off as too negative in this video, but I really felt like it needed to be talked about. I just want people to be better, and Pyra has always been taking the worst hits. Again, I'm not saying you should neglect playing Mithra, she's important too. But when Pyra is a lot of people's Achilles heel, something needs to change. Maybe it really is time for that Pyra guide, huh? I've done a bunch of videos covering different topics, but not something big and definitive people can refer to. Let me know if you want one. 
That being said, I'll of course be doing my best to provide helpful videos and such. That's what I'm here for, and that's what I love doing. If anything, it's my life goal right now to make people aware of how good Pyra is and what makes her so terrific. I want people to learn as much as possible. One does not simply escape the Pyra propaganda. If you find yourself struggling with Pyra, consider doing a solo Pyra challenge for a while. I promise it will be worth it. So what do you think? Is Pyra more important in the grand scheme of things, or am I helping too much copium? I'd love to hear your takes in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please move the like button for me. And if you really enjoy what I do in general, please consider becoming a YouTube member. It is not much, but you get badges and emotes, and my bills become a bit lighter. Thanks for watching, and take care.